Boom, boom. It's another Wednesday. And for those of you who watch this religiously, you know what that means. What that means is it's another live on live. What's going on, everybody? What's up, Tories? I like how I just made that um, sort of efficient and abbreviated instead of the Tory Tory. Oh, she's on that Discord. She's on that Discord. I feel like it's kind of washed out at the moment. It's a funny day here in LA, weather-wise. It's um, it was almost jacket weather the last 24 hours. June gloom. It's it's real. It's real and it's not unreal. Let's see who's in so far. Tori came in and then she popped out. I know, I like the weather as well. Um, I, I think it's cool that, uh, especially like right after all this amazing, hey, what's up, Lava? Thank you. Thank you for inviting your friends. Good to see you again. We roped Llama in next, this Friday. She's coming in. Hey, um, you're going to play some songs for us. Did you, did you have certain songs that you wanted us to kind of talk about and explore with you? Or did you want us to just kind of pick one um, from the few that you sent, sent, sent us? That's an example of how you don't ask a question. Yeah, I know you sent some to Tori. Um, do you want us to just pick one? Or do you have like one that's kind of like, oh, it's my favorite, it's my precious song. It's the best thing I've ever written. It's, it's kind of up to you, but if not, um, we'll just pick uh, one or two. Do you have those in a, a link form? Yeah, I get it. You're what they call prolific. So you write all the time and uh, that's a good problem. Um, do you have a couple of them that you can put on to like a YouTube link or something of that nature? I know you've got like 48 songs. Um, oh, you have a band lab. So we can play from that directly. I mean, I know they have links, but I just want to make sure people can uh, listen in. Dope. Okay, so um, definitely. So I will check in with you, Llama, probably by, I'm going to say sometimes Thursday latest, and um, we'll chat at all about any of the, uh, you know, songs and maybe what you want to talk about and fun stuff, song stuff. Um, we love doing those. And um, we're bringing in a kind of a, a ghetto fabulous chalkboard um this friday for for llama um it's gonna get it's gonna get pretty serious uh and we're gonna break some we're gonna break some stuff down i'm trying to watch my language and the reason is this is i don't llama have you heard of fish the fish do you know fish the fish on on you now like have you ever stumbled upon fish the fish he's this person that like came on you now I think um I think he's newish but I stumbled on to his stream Friday or Thursday of last week um and I think he's like 13 or 14 years old so he's in front of a I think he's playing a a uke and he's playing something and he's like yeah I wrote that and I was like wow and then he played a couple more things. And then he went over to a piano and was like, here's something else I'm working on. And he starts playing stuff. And it sounds pretty good. Oh, wait, first he went to drums. He went to like an electronic drum kit and was like, let me just play a little something to 21 Pilots real fast. And like nailed that. And uh, then moved over to the piano and was like, da, 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 da. And I'm like, this kid's sort of annoyingly talented. We need to get him on here. And, and then I'm like, dude, you drop F-bombs every five minutes on the show. So you've got to reel it back, at least for Fish the Fish. 
Um, he's such a cool kid. You guys are going to love him. I'm already like convinced that we're going to bring him on. Um, I know. So I got to like, I got to, I got to reel it back a little bit. Um, but um, yeah, he's so, he's such a cool dude. And you guys are going to, what's up, Oralisha? Good to see you guys. So I think that's Paul. Simon. What's going on, Paul? Good to see you, Colton. The crew is here in the green room. Um, we just do a bunch of nothing here for about the next 10 minutes and just kind of let people filter in. Uh, but we're super stoked to have you guys. Um, I can't wait. Tori gave me the debrief. She's like, okay, here's what you're going to talk about today. Just so you guys know how this really works. Tori is awesome. It's going to go nerdy. It's going to go hardcore nerdtastic. Tor Tori was like, that email you sent yesterday was so you. I'm like, oh. I'm like, oh, I tried to be so me on that email, and I nailed it. Uh, what's up, Annie? You are so loyal to us. You are so loyal to us, Annie. How you been? We love Anna. Annie. Anna. 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 That was my grandmother's name, Anna. Um, so I just channeled that for a moment. I actually did. I was, um, so for Father's Day, which is in like, if you don't have Father's Day figured out right now, it's probably going to be too late for you to get that card where it needs to go. But uh, just trying to make y'all feel bad. It's Wednesday, dude. Like, get it in the mail. Get it in the mail. Stop messing around. Um, Rose and Anna, yeah. Um, so for Father's Day, I found a um, my my family on my my dad's side is like 100% Italian, as you can tell from my hair, which hasn't been cut in like three years, um, because of the pandemic, and just because I figured why not. Um, so my family, my, my dad and my two brothers and I went to Italy and kind of like, you know, reconnected with our roots. And so this was years ago. I was about this big. And um, we found uh, like a, basically my great aunt, um, my, my grandmother's sister. But of course, they had fought and weren't talking to each other because it's an Italian family. So everything's dramatic. And uh, so we went and found her. And uh, thank you, Tori, for inviting your 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 friends. Um, anyway, I'm getting to the point, I promise. And um, so I found a picture from that trip, which is like me and my two brothers, and we're on a gondola. We're on a gondola in Venice with two guys that are going like, ah, da, 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 and they're like, like pushing the gondola. It's like a classic, like, so I put that in the mail and um, sent it with the card um, so that I don't have to write anything. I just be like, love you, dad. I don't want to say anything. What are you going to say? So I'll send a picture. And then it's like, picture's worth at least a thousand words, especially that one. It's probably worth 2,000. So um, what was the point of that? Um, there was a point, but I don't remember what it was. Father's Day pictures. I'm literally going to scroll back here. This is what really old people do. They go back and they go, what was I thinking about five minutes ago? Oh, Anne. That's it. So my grandmother's name was Anne. And that was how we discovered that the, the house that we found in this old Italian town was actually the home of my great aunt because of her. Thanks. That's one. I've been a little slow on those recently i think when we first started these i was doing dad jokes and old man moments like it was like five a stream and now it's like i have to just be it's like begging for laughs it's like is that is that old enough for you guys um so what else is new what else you guys want to talk about we're going to be um we're going to be learning some stuff about Our Relation, which is a studio in um, Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, I'm very, very excited to have these guys on because they obviously live very deeply in the music part. They have a commercial studio. They're doing a lot of things with live streaming. 
They're very nerd friendly. Um, sounds like the uh, Paul's family, maybe we might have the whole whole family on or some of the family on in the background hovering around. So that should be fun. Um, so let me know what you guys might want to talk about. Otherwise, I'm going to take control of the entire stream and just ask what I think will be interesting. Um, yeah, I think what's interesting about where we are at the moment, and again, um, I'll get into this when I, when I bring them on a little bit, is like every state in the union right now is kind of in a different moment of rolling out or out of the pandemic situation. So different commercial studios are doing different kinds of things at the moment, um, which sort of affects the whole industry. There's certain parts of the country that are like allowed to do certain things and certain places that are not. Um, we've got East West Studio in Los Angeles. It's gonna be on next week as well, um, along the same lines. They're, they're doing some, they've been trying to kind of push the envelope as much as possible within the bounds of regulations um but yeah anything you guys would find interesting um to learn about a this is the first time we've had a commercial studio on like to really sort of talk with them pretty pretty extensively guillermo's probably close to a commercial studio yeah tori's excited when tori starts nerding out on my text and starts blowing up my phone beforehand it's gonna be it's gonna be heavy. It's gonna be good. Zuko, I think you were on before. Um, what's going on, man? Hey, Ben, what's going on, my dude? Um, <laughs> man, I do not know what that means, but it seems like you're you're revved up. It seems like you're happy to be here and. Um, <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> I love whatever you're saying. I'm just not sure what it means, but I'm all for it. Um, so I'm doing great, Zuko. How are you doing? Where are you, where are you coming in from? It's always my classic first question. Don't feel like I'm sort of like interrogating you. I just, I'm always curious, like where people are popping in. You know what I mean? Zuko, Zuko. It's a fun name to say, dude. It's like, um, you're welcome, Tori. Tori likes to be the, uh, what is it, a moderator, a referee? She gets you a little whistle. That'd be fun. A little black and white striped outfit. Hey, hey, foul. Call out like party fouls. Annie, you wanna you wanna help out? I think you can have multiple referees. I think I feel like at this point I would be I'd be reasonably comfortable having Annie on as a referee. I think she's got good instincts. Wow, why are you so aggressive this week, Tori? You're such a princess of power this week. I like that. Yeah, it's because she's pumped up. She's like, ah, I don't know what to do with all this energy, man. I'm like, yeah. Um, this is fun. I love having you guys on, man. It's like, I don't know. I don't want to get cheesy on you. Wait till, wait till Father's Day for, for the cheesy. Save it up. Pack it into like a five minute phone call. Love you, Dad. Love you too, son. All right, I gotta go. All right, me, yeah, me too. Talk to you next year. No, it's not like that. But, you know, like, guys can only do so much kind of like, you know, sweet stuff. Stuff like that. You like cheese? Oh, dude, this is the spot. We could we could probably handle a little more cheese. We could do some more cheese. I think you guys are gonna way cheese out when fish the fish comes on. You guys are gonna all want to like hug him. Like he's so insanely awesome as a person already at 13. Like I can't imagine what he's gonna be at like 26 or whatever. Um oh. 
Ben, I didn't even see that. Uh, I'm sorry, dude. I didn't even see uh, your likes pop up. But thank you, uh, Tori, for for uh, what's up, Yuma? Yuma. Good to see you, Yuma. I'm glad you're here, bro. This will be a good one for you. This will be a good one. So we're about to we're about to bring them on. Um, you gentlemen, ready to pop on? Everybody. Uh, Got their, um, what do you call that, their foundation on? You guys all uh, gelled up and um, your nails and whatever else you guys do, I'm sure. They're pros, let me tell you. Ready to rock it in Cleveland. Let's do this, man. Right as it turns 10. Okay, Let's see if we can get both you guys on at the same time. I got a Colton. Can you hear me, dude? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Say hey, Colton. Hey. That proves <laughs> that I've seen your videos. Yep. Right? That's kind of an inside joke. Paul. Oh. <laughs> All hey. right. I like how your first woot out of the gate breaks the mic. Your mic just like, right ah. away. Just got to do it. This is everybody. Just got to go I right like at that. it. Like wow. <laughs> he's like he's like you guys are like sixty seconds before the thing. You're like all right, let's go hard right from this top. Let's go like yeah. as loud as possible. Turn the mics up. We're gonna tear. Go. We're gonna let's tear go. this up. We yeah. have a game plan. No, no wonder Tori was so like. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> These guys Tori, are crazy. What's like, happened? What what got into you? Like, I, you know, wow. They've lost their minds. Dude, I got to say, Colton, you, you got a little extra hair as well, bro. From yeah. Right? You've been, yeah. you've been rocking it. You've been I, uh, rocking it pretty hard. He's got the COVID yeah. quaff going. Man, yeah, like it's the, that's weeks, what yeah. it is. I was, trying to, I was trying to figure out what it is, and it's the COVID quaff. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes we'll hook up and it'll be, you know, it'll be late at night. He'll zoom on. And, man, he's been working a long day and those headphones. I mean, his hair is like three feet tall. <laughs> yeah. and... My hair grows out. It doesn't grow long. Oh, mine goes out and like kind of up. <laughs> it just goes I... up. It's like, are you are you pulling something? Like, are you, do you have a signal? That's hilarious. Somewhere? It's awesome, dude. I like so it. So Knoxville. So, so tell us about, okay, let's, 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 um, let me sort of tee this off a little bit. Most of the people that are here at the moment kind of know the drill, but I still want to kind of like, let me zoom out for 30 seconds and sort of kind of like, what what in the world is this? Got and it, this will be it. a good practice for me to not drop F-bombs because- um, <laughs> It's I'm all right with it. it. No, I know it's all right with you. And that's what I mean. It's good practice. If I slip, like nobody cares, but I'm preparing for that broader audience where it might be like, dude, you know, fish the fish comes on dude don't don't be doing that <laughs> so i have to like practice bring it in so what is live on live live on live is a live stream about live streams um specifically about music driven live streams um and sort of what's important to know about it if you're if you're somehow in the profession of music or production or if you want to learn how to do live streaming yourself if you want to uh if you're an artist if you want to collaborate also, if you want to do kind of things virtually or, or work in, um, you know, in, in different ways that, that make it easier to be productive and creative without being in the same room or, you know, closer than six feet, um, however long we have to keep doing that, probably through the end of the year-ish before it becomes like relatively close to what we're used to. So this is a, this is a kind of a regular thing we do. We bring on smart people, smarter <laughs> than us. We help them. <clears throat> um sort of explore what they're doing and that helps us sound smarter is what we do um and um this was inspired by um a publication that i started writing about three months ago now um that's called the virtual and remote um music guide it's there's a free version online um tori if you want to post that that's just something we're going to be adding to um, it happens to be available through some industry publications that are not free, but we wanted to make sure it's free as well. And it's got live streaming platforms. It's got contacts. It's got consultants. It's got specialists. It's got studios. It's got um, all sorts of things, interviews. Um, so that's kind of what this is and what we're, um, why we're so excited to have 
um, the guys from Oralation on today. So nice job um, with the name. Is it, is that? That's right. You had it. Yeah. My wife still okay. calls it Oralation, and I begged her to please stop <laughs> saying that. But I'm yeah, like, it sounds like it might be sort of like a toothpaste service. Of yeah, it's. I'm trying to get her to change it, but like, she, no, it's like every week you get a fresh, small tube of toothpaste. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. She won't yeah. stop saying it. I don't understand. Bubble gum, mint. Yeah. I, it's, great yeah. flavor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. So tell 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 us about um, Paul. You, you can you can kick this off. Tell us about your role at the studio and kind of like your background um, in, in putting this together in Knoxville. Strangely enough, Knoxville has a large and thriving television production community, which is really strange. We're the home of Discovery Networks, which is, oh, okay. and, bef- and Discovery came in to buy Scripps Networks, which was HGTV, DIY Network, Food Network, all those guys. And so for 20, 25 years, long time, I'm only 30, um, for quite a long time, I've been writing music for film and television and documentaries right here in Knoxville because there is a thriving community here. I mean, it's really amazing. Um, we make a lot of crime shows here, um, which is really, it's, we're the crime show capital making uh, of the world. I think, I mean, all my friends have either been dead bodies or, um, or <sighs> detectives or, yeah, I know. I want to I'm really that. good at, at this, this pose. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys ever need that. Uh, I've been a serial killer's dad in an episode. It was really fun. I like it. Uh, we make lots of crime shows. So we make a lot of crime music and we make a lot of, um, we do a lot of commercial work. So we began this business a long time ago. And and recently in the last four or five years, we've kind of become a hybrid. We're still doing the composing and, and uh, hosting a library online and things like that. But then also we've started into band recording and um, songwriting, you know, so, small songwriting studio and things like that. So we're starting to branch out. It's a nice combination because while we can cut bands, we can also cut our own music for our own music library. So we host a music library of about seven or 8,000 tunes. We're getting placement all over the place. Um, it's just really strange. I mean, we're in sort of this outpost, this kind of Nashville-like outpost. Knoxville's kind of the Nashville refugee camp. When you're, when you're done with Nashville, come how, on and hang how out How far in are you guys from Nashville? About just... two and a half hours. Okay. Yeah, not yeah. bad. Amazing. So yeah, so we started we we started this and we tried to get our hands into like I said you know music libraries and sound effects and we mix for television so we have a post uh, we have a post audio branch of the whole business but then we're also like I said we're cutting bands and we're doing songwriting and making loops and just we're just doing a little bit of everything you know we just found that to to make money at this you you know I think the the time of hey I'm gonna open a studio and I'm gonna bill forty hours a week at 50 bucks an hour and make a great living with bands coming in. I think just that time is over. And especially what's happening now, thank God we became so diversified because now, you know, now it's going to take doing everything we can to just keep income streams going. Right. And I just want to add to that, um, that you guys have done a great job of putting a lot of very good content online and live streams and different um, YouTube tutorials and things that, you know, studios don't tend to do that. Um, they don't tend to necessarily want to show all their secrets, frankly. And I have so thought about that. You guys have done time. a really cool. You've really, you really no, and it's super cool. And I wanted to make sure that was a part of the intro sort of blurb there. Well, we started that because, I mean, when when it hit, I don't know how it was for y'all, but for us, it happened over a weekend here in March. Mm-hmm. I mean, all my friends were going, "Hey, uh, of course." All my friends have Tennessee accents, so that's why they all sound like they're like about to say, hold my beer. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they're just like, hey, man, my cousin said the National Guard's coming in. They're going to take over with all the hotels, and we're not going to be able to go anywhere. I was like, well, shit, man, this, this is going to be a problem. So I packed up everything I could in my studio and put it in my truck, everything I could get into one trip, took it home, and boom, we were locked down. And, I mean, we, oh, we can still, we're in Knoxville, though. I mean, we're, you can still travel. It's not like a bigger city, you know. Okay. It's 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 it has still been a quarantine and we've still had to close our businesses down, but we can still travel and move around a little bit. But and then all of a sudden we found ourselves, boom, we're stuck in our homes. We don't have anything else to do. And I've been saying to Colton forever, man, we've got to start doing tutorials. We've got to start doing and we'd already been practicing them. And when the first thing that came up for us was Zoom stereo audio, you know, we all of a sudden everybody's zooming all day long. We started to try to pass some audio for reviews with our clients and like, man, this audio sounds like crap. Yep. And what is going on? And once we started experimenting with that, we're like, oh, my gosh, I, this is OK. I'm starting to see the problems here. We're like, we got to put this on. We got to we got to do this. So we made the one tutorial we made. You know, I was happy when we got to 40 views and then when it hit 20,000, something like, good God, what is happening? So we've been trying to kind of keep up with that and just make some more because we've learned 
lots of awesome things about trying to live stream stereo, good stereo audio from our interfaces and things like that. Yep. It's awesome. Um, Colton, tell us yeah. a little bit about your, your role in this. So for our relation, uh, I mean, I spend most of my time writing music yep. for, for the TV shows and, you know, composing for clients. Um, I help Paul with the tutorials. I'll come in and, and uh, do some engineering for him for voiceover sessions. And I've been a part of tracking a few bands there. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's all I do. The majority of my time is, is that's writing. it. That's a, that's like five hats. You can't really fit too many more. On, on your head. <laughs> He's underselling. Yeah, He's a hell of a trap beat producer. Am I saying that? <laughs> am I saying that? I said it like a grandpa. Yeah. He makes those trap beats like you, you know that stuff you hear on the radio, <laughs> just like that. Yeah, I do. I do a lot of modern production stuff. Awesome. Okay. Um, so that's actually um, part of part of what I think is is cool about. Um, what you guys are doing is that if I understood you correctly a second ago, Paul, some of the clients and, and even just internally between the two of you guys, you can run a studio and provide services, but you're also creating cues, you're creating custom score, you're creating libraries, even maybe maybe with some of the artists that are coming in and, and throwing down things, right? So you guys have this sort of blending of a lot of different things that um you could tech any studio could technically do but most studios can't keep up with all these different things that are going on is that so are you guys kind of able to blend all these things or am i not understanding that correct no you're, you're saying yeah. it exactly right i mean so when like when a band comes in we offer to them hey you want to strip down your stuff and give us instrumental versions we'll totally put it in the library and get some play for it we try to keep it a very simple agreement so that we're not, you know, we're not trying to, um, we're not trying to, I don't want to be a record company. I don't want to own anybody's catalog. I'd love to take your instrumentals and get it played on some TV shows and see if we can, you can make some writer's royalties. We can make some com publishing royalties at the end of the day when you're, when you need to walk away with it, you can walk back away with it. We will have made a little money and we're done with it. So that's, Got it. we're trying to be really composer writer friendly. We don't want to, we don't want to be a record company. We don't want to be a massive publishing company collecting things. We just want to get our, you know, the people we know around us some usage, get it and teach them. I mean, we've been, I've been doing television royalties. I've been receiving television royalties for probably 20, 25 years now. You know, in LA, you can go to lunch with somebody who knows everything there is to know about royalties and television performance. I don't know anybody. We've had to scrape and find out everything that we can. And it's a hard bit. No one wants to give up. You kind of said it before. No one wants to give up the secrets. And so after we've done that for a while, it's like I really feel strongly that I want to share that with the people around us because, one, it's money on the table. If you can get if you can create content and get it played on television and generate some royalties, that's just money left on the table. You, you, need, you need to go ahead and do that. Plus, it then helps you understand. I think I think getting into publishing and royalties especially when it comes to streaming and things like that, it's so complicated. Actually, the TV part's way, way easier. And once you get that under your belt, then you can start figuring out how to get your million streams and your $10 from Spotify and things like that. Right, right. How did you guys... So one of the things that was cool about kind of looking into you was you guys have been doing live streaming way before the pandemic sort of started getting people to start paying attention to this stuff. When did you start live streaming and why did you start live streaming? Oh, what would we do, Colton? Our first test, you know, I don't know, a year ago, something like that, something like yeah, that. We, yeah, I mean, for the bands. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. We've been well. Okay. We started offering these one-shot, one-phone, one-shot band videos. Okay. You know, listen. If you got five hundred bucks, you could go to a demo studio and make a couple of recordings of some things, but you could also come and make we can set up a live performance in our studio and you can make, you can cut two or three songs if your band is good in a couple hours with a great cameraman with an iPhone and you've got a great performance video. And after we started doing that for a while, we're like, well, crap, we're getting good at this. Let's live stream this. So we tried a couple of live streams. Well, it was hard as hell. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was <laughs> why, why, why is that hard as hell? Well, to, to, to do the, just the one shot with the phone, 
was easy. But then for live stream, of course, you, you start simply. You're like, I'm just going to put up one camera. We'll get some good audio. But then I got my alpha. Well, maybe two cameras. Well, I'll get my sling studio out and we'll try. Well, I got three. I got some GoPros. After a while, you got five cameras trying to run. You're trying to do all of that. The very first one we did, as soon as I hit go live, every if the, the everything looked great on our end. And then I hit go live and everything just crapped the bed. I mean, it was just <laughs> like nothing. Yeah. And it was because I actually tried to watch it on Facebook on the same computer. I was like, well, this has been really bad. Um, so we took our trying to work with bands and have, have and that's when we started live streaming. And we've gotten better at it each time. Um, mm -hmm. So make it less complicated. Try to use some simpler setups, get really great, great audio. Um, and then just kind of get a couple camera angles. And so that's been really good. I mean, that's so that's how we started. So. You, you initially started by just having maybe like a, a quick, almost 30 minute video with a phone, just yeah. really super simple. And then it became, well, we could technically do that in the moment, live stream it. Sure. Did you feel like, now this is back before the pandemic, which I think is kind of cool um, that you guys have sort of the data set pre-pandemic. Did bands or artists or, or managers, or whoever might be looking at this, were they apprehensive about, well, this is live. Like, what if the band breaks down and the beat falls apart and they don't sound good and the guy's out of tune? Was that part of the discussion or was there any, was there any sort of resistance to the idea of live streaming out of context? We only approach people really we thought could do it, which, okay. which yeah. But, so these are people who do live performance. You know, they go and play the four-hour jazz set at the, at the restaurant. And yeah. uh, so these, you know, and I, we said the same thing. Just come do your set here, you know? Do you sit here and um, if you mess up, so what, you know, and uh, turn out everybody did a great job from the solo artist to the to the two bands that we had in. They did a great job. Right. So so basically pulling in people that can sort of walk in and sound good yep. is a good is a good is a good place to start if you're getting into live streaming um, so that you're not dealing with sort of like, can these people actually perform and sound good and in tune? Um, so so. So then now that you've been sort of doing it for a little while, what what has been sort of a successful live stream for you? Like what is an example of, oh, that went well, client was happy, it seemed like it was something that, that the performance kind of had a nice um, mojo to it. How does that come together? I think our Red Zephyr stream was really good. Um, they're a, a jazz band and their tunes were killer. It was all original, yeah. these jazz hybrid weirdo tunes. Sort of and, and jazz. And they were ready. They were just just yeah. really ready. And we, yeah. we tried to keep it casual in between songs. We talked a little bit, but um, we just really let them play. And that, that went really well. I was really happy with that. Yep. By the way, thank you for the props on the beard. It's been, it's been a long time coming. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, uh, I saw on your Facebook page, I saw sort of like a 20-second trailer version of that but I don't think I saw the full session. So I could tell like, oh, these guys are good musicians. Yeah, yeah. And you guys had like, you know, gobos for the drums or whatever you had, like a kind of, you know, separation. And it, it was, you guys were doing it the right way. And it was probably the sound was was on point. When when did you do that? Oh, uh, gosh, remember? that was probably towards a, uh, may have been about a year ago, a little bit less. Okay, yeah. 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 So you guys have been in this for a minute. Yeah. Um, What's the what's the biggest challenge of live streaming right now? Is it figuring out OBS? Is it not crashing? Is it using restream? Like, what is the biggest thing that you think is is sort of like the toughest part about live streaming at the moment? What do you think, Colton? I mean, for me, it was just it was trying to get stereo audio, getting getting everything to sound good, and 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 also dealing with latency. You know, there's things out there that'll that you can use as a sound card that stream and they sound decent, but they'll give you a ton of latency. And when you're trying to write, I mean, that just doesn't work. So get it, just getting good quality to the stream was the biggest problem for me. Right. So when you say you were trying to write, does that mean you were doing a live stream as a collaborative process or were you just kind of writing on the fly and coming up with stuff? Writing on the fly and coming up with okay. stuff. Like awesome. um, sometimes I'll stream just, writing music inside of logic and uh yeah so that's just all coming up with stuff on the fly and how does that work do you do you take 
interaction from people and are you kind of listening to what they're saying and watching the messaging or are you just kind of in your element and letting people enjoy it however they want to yeah i mean if anybody has a suggestion i'll entertain it you know if i if i think it's a good idea then sure um but i'm i mean i'm always paying attention and i try to be responsive his grandma's like, hey, Colton, why don't you use that sick hi-hat right there? And yeah. uh, she's like, yeah, Grandma, I'll do it. Good idea. Yeah. Like, Grandma, grandma, how do you know what a hi-hat is? It's because every weekend when he goes home, it's like, Grandma, hi-hat, <laughs> kick drum, snare drum. We went over this last weekend. Come <laughs> on. Done this. Now we're going to put on a song. We're going to um, now, when you're really ready to nerd out, we can talk about our investigation into stereo audio and streaming because it's some deep. It's a deep dive with lots of tears and swear, swearing. Good. So let's let's go. So so let's let's go through it like almost like tier by tier because I feel like <laughs> the people that are watching this are going to want to hear every ounce of the drama. It's like a reality show. I really want to have as much pain as possible in this project. No, so. <laughs> So like, what's the, what was the first moment where you're like, this is not really sounding that good. And then the solution, what was that first solution that you sort of, that first breakthrough? So uh, for me, it was, it was after we got quarantined, I went home and I have a uh, Apogee Ensemble Thunderbolt interface. And th this is important because of that piece of gear. On yep. that, it's a Thunderbolt audio interface. I mean, so most of your people listening, would they understand an audio interface? Yeah, maybe. They'll, they'll, know, yeah, yeah okay. we've we've been nerding out for a, a couple of months. So, okay. But but well, I, what I try and do to answer your question honestly is I try and keep it in this sort of middle ground because we have some people that are like studio people, and we sure, have some sure. people that are just kind of like, oh, I'm just kind of watching this and taking it in. So it's somewhere All in right. the middle. So, okay, so when I got home and I reset up in my garage, as my wife was complaining about for every second, she's like, you are not staying here forever. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, I set up my Apogee, fo fo my, my Apogee Thunderbolt Ensemble. And why that's yep. important is because it has a little pinhole on the front. Well, I'll tell you about that in a minute. So I would Zoom with Colton. I would Zoom with clients. And I said, and Colton would say, hey, you're doubled. I was like, there's no way I'm doubled. I'm just, I've got my mic plugged in. I got one mic. I got the only thing is you're doubled. You're doubled. I was like, this is not happening. I was Zoom. Somebody else says you're doubled. You're doubled. I was like, this is, I'm really irritated with this. I don't understand why. So then I realized that on the front of my Apogee, there's a tiny pinhole. Like if you took a safety pin and pin it in it, and it's a talkback mic. And so when I would plug this mic into my interface and talk, you'd have two mics. I'd have two on. mics going. So I got on with Apogee. And, and, and when I would go to the control panel, and mute that channel. That channel, by the way, is channel nine, if you're interested, <clears throat> on the Apogee. And when you go mute it, it wouldn't stop. And so I got I, I got on a chat with Apogee, and I said, hey, man, listen, I want to not have this talk back when I am hooked into Zoom or Skype or anything else. It's not recording in my DAW, like Logic or Pro Tools. It's not recording, but everybody tells me they can hear it, and the guy's like, yeah, that's a problem. Sorry, dude. <laughs> like, you got to be kidding me seriously so yeah it's a problem it's part of the it's part it's internally digitally wired that's how it that's that's the problem and that mm -hmm. is when the search began when we started this latest round of inter of, of tutorials like this we okay. this is there's no way this can be a problem i don't believe this and at the same time we were discovering that everything we were sending over even though zoom has a stereo switch right everything we we're sending over is still mono we switch on the stereo switch it was still mono which right. is when we found out that we could take a program like Loopback or I Show You Now or any of those other things. When I would go into Loopback and I'd call it up, I saw that pinhole talkback mic registering every time. As soon as I disconnected it, no more doubling. So I would start using this Loopback thing. And then Colton would say, hey, by the way, you're now in stereo. It's like, well, God, what is that wow. about? So then, so then we started looking into going interface into Zoom, interface into Skype, interface into OBS. None of it was real stereo. You get this yep. faux kind of phasey thing where you hear a little bit here, you hear a little bit. None of it was. As soon as you put loop back in line, but as soon as you put that in there, stereo, full beautiful stereo, like that, like what we're hearing on either side. Great yep. stereo on either side. So that's when we started really looking into loop back. Okay, so how can you get stereo audio into Zoom, into OBS? How do you go out of Logic? And so that's why we started making the tutorials because we were learning this. It was like, well, this is dumb for us just to know it and not share with anybody. And, right. and that's for how those that happened. watching. Um, we've talked about Loopback before with some other um, folks that are on, but 
five second description. Loopback is a hundred dollar app uh, or software um, component. It's basically a virtual sound card that allows you to do things um, in live streaming and, and uh, particularly to use your DAW, to use your professional digital audio workstation to get the audio from there and get things like a stereo audio signal. Fair? That yeah, that's a great good? description. Okay. Um, great. So, so you guys started sort of cracking the code. So the first, the first thing was, oh, loop back. Loop back. Yes. Yeah. So, so let me ask you kind of a leading question. One of the guys that we, we had on that's a kind of a live stream consultant said the first hundred dollars you spend should be on loop back. Would yep, you I agree. agree with that? I, oh, I yeah. would because you yeah. can just do other things with it. I mean, I was uh, playing around just a little while ago, you know, like how do I, if I want to play something over my browser right now, how could I route it to you? Uh, although I didn't finish because I was getting nervous. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, there's just so much you can do with Loopback. I captured a YouTube video the other day. You know, I, ha I have some YouTube streaming capture things. I wanted some audio, but I couldn't get it. Use uh, Loopback to route into it. Man, it, it works great. All that Rogue Amoeba stuff is is really good. But Loopback, but the, but the big thing about it is it breaks that, weird chain where that digital audio is from from an interface into an app that's not a DAW it just it's not it doesn't work right it just doesn't sound good and loopback just breaks whatever that issue is right so do you feel and this is probably I mean you're not you haven't done this with every single interface out there and by the way an interface is just a fancy word for when you're plugging something into your computer or your digital audio workstation you plug it into something that then takes it into your DAW Right. And that thing generally um, sort of translates an electrical signal or an audio signal into something that the computer can understand. And that's it's right. important. The quality of that translation is, is really important for professional music oh, yeah. production. Do, do you feel like loopback instinctively, because you haven't necessarily used every single interface, but loopback pretty much solves the problem for most interfaces, regardless of what you have. I think it does. And, and what's okay. interesting is, I mean, here's, okay, you ready? This is full geek. Ready? I mean, you might just hear everyone pass out while I start talking about this. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be just like that. <laughs> Listen, when you when you bought your interface and you went and hooked up your speakers, what did you plug into? You, you plugged in your speakers into what in the back of your interface? Into what? You, what channels did you plug into? Uh, one and two. It's a trick question. Right. One and two, right? Left and right. One and two. It's labeled on the back, right? Left and right. One and two outputs, right? On my Apogee interface, it says one and two outputs. When I go to loop back, it's not coming out of one and two. It's coming out of 11 and 12. The digital path is out of 11 and 12. Once you hook that digital path up, you got great audio going into the other things. It'll blow you away. I think it's worth just hooking up your interface and bringing loop back, even as a trial, to see what channels are actually active in your loop back. I know that sounds crazy, but I, two of my interfaces, I think, Colton, yours is the same way, right? Yours isn't just out of one and two. Yeah, mine's yours, on nine and ten. Yeah, and the loopback channels. And so when you hook up mm -hmm. nine, you don't go in and go, I want output one and two to go somewhere. You actually, it's coming out of the loopback channels nine and 10. Once you hook that in, you've got clean audio passing all around. Have you guys done um, any work with, um, uh, what am I thinking of? What is it that Guillermo uses? Um, is it Dante? Uh, no, so there's... For some reason, it's uh, escaping me at the moment. But source um, element, source nexus, source connect. Close. We definitely want to talk about that. Um, I show you universal audio. Universal audio. Oh yeah, yeah. In the latency thing. So Colton, have have you toyed around with universal audio, and do you think that's part of the solution for sort of the 2.0 level, or is that not something you guys have in your menu at the moment? Well, the only thing I use universal audio for is in my DAW. I use their I use their plugins, but I don't have a universal audio interface. Got it. Or any of their other software. It's only it's only plugins. Do you think that's worth toying around with? Have you guys have you guys toyed around with that at all? I haven't. No. Okay. So Universal Audio has a. It was Guillermo who was on a few weeks ago, and also um, um, Tano who was on like last week. Both like Universal Audio because the the way the interface um, works, it essentially allows you a zero latency environment. Um, because even before it goes into the DAW, you you have you have the audio kind of uh, because essentially the interface is is the DSP. It's the one that's processing the audio. So for live streaming, I think um, I think it can be useful. 
So I was just curious if you guys were using that. Well, so, so that's interesting. So that's interesting. So most interfaces, the ones that we have, and so you know, we've got like an Apogee Ensemble. We've got a bunch of Focusrite Red Fours, Red Eights. He's got an Army, whatever, whatever. Um, yep. um, most of those do the no latency monitoring, and that becomes part of the trick too. You know, how do you pass audio around with no latency monitoring? So I'm like right now, I hear myself through my Focusrite Red Four. I'm not right. listening back to the Chrome or anything like that. So I'm doing a no latency thing but when you once you start to pass that audio to different things you start to introduce a little bit of latency here a little bit of latency there especially right and especially for us when we started streaming while trying to do like tutorials with logic we wanted to pass our mic no latency like you're talking about into this the stream but then we also want to pass some reverb and we pass some other things and after a while that latency starts to become a problem um and so that's one that's another issue that we we dug into right um, let's zoom out for a second. I'm kind of curious about live streaming as a thing. Like, let's say six months from now, do you feel like what role do you think live streaming will have for you guys at the studio? Guessing. I really, well, I think for us, live streaming to teach and to coach and to share is going to be important. I think we're going to end up doing more and more of that. Not completely. I, I'm not, I don't, you know, we've done all this without charging anybody right now. We feel like we want to just build up a base. Define all this. Um, streaming tutorials, making tutorials, live streaming, doing the, the, doing the stuff that we're doing. Even the bands that came in, we didn't charge anybody. We're building up our base. Um, you know, I'd love to find, I'd love to get a thousand, 2000 subscribers on YouTube Yep. Uh, and then maybe turn around one day and go, hey, guess what? We made this cool sound effects pack. You guys interested? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 20, 10 bucks, gotcha. 20 bucks maybe. You know, I don't know this is ever going to be a massive revenue stream for us, but I love the idea of being able to teach and coach over live stream. Um, I really, really wish we could collaborate better in real time. And I don't know whoever, whoever's going to crack that nut is going to be a gazillion, billion, zillionaire um, to do some musical collaboration in real time. We started working with that a little bit with the audio movers listen to. Um, which is pretty good, um, and it's close. It's about the closest I think we've gotten to. But I, I think once if we can do some live streaming and do some real collaboration where people can come in and out, that would be killer. Have you guys tried um, Session Wire? Have no. Mm -mm. Sessionwire.com. Check it out. It's it's a DAW to DAW synchronous production environment. Right. Um, it's sort of similar to Audio Movers. So there's Audio Movers, which is a kind of a, a very low footprint little app that you can have running or actually it's not even an app you can just kind of have it running as a browser and it allows someone halfway across the world to basically almost in real time be listening to something while you're basically playing it from your DAW. right which is incredibly useful and everyone i i know that it does any work in studios is like yeah audio movers they've either heard of it or they've used it have you seen our tutorial on it no Oh, it's I didn't dope. Know you had one. Oh, it's that's a, dope. That's a good one. Yeah. Good. It only okay. took like 25 takes to do it. Um, <laughs> Colt and I, we did argue some and did threaten to never talk to each other Ooh, again when I we were done. That. That's like the <laughs> best <laughs> album when the whole band's like, you know what? I'm done. Yeah, I'm, done. I'm done. I hate I've you guys. Had, had it, I'm done and with it. And then you can hear it in the, in the music. I love that. We would yeah. finish. No, we would I finish mean. a whole take. We'd finish a whole take, <laughs> and then we would get off of the Zoom call, and then I would jump back on. And go, I screwed it up. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Let's we do, it again. do it again. He wouldn't we even talk to me after a while. It's like I'm not doing it yeah. again. <laughs> like, yep, mm -hmm. yep. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So for some reason, um, that wasn't one of the ones that I, when I was, you know, kind of poking around online, I saw, I don't know, half a dozen to a dozen um, videos that I thought were kind of especially relevant for today, but I didn't see the one on audio movers. Now, our newest one is just killer. It's Source Connect and Source Nexus and Zoom. And that oh, yeah. is some NASA SpaceX uh, yeah. schematics right there. So explain for people um, that don't oh. work at a major studio, what is Source Connect? And major. How, why is, what, what, what is Source Connect? And how does it compare? In other words, why is it important to know what Source Connect is when you're trying to understand live streaming right now? Sure. So Nor Source Connect is what we use to hook up with voiceover artists. So if you've got a great voice, you need to be on Source Connect. I can connect with anybody. Uh, lately, we've been doing Nutrisystem commercials with their voiceover, uh, uh, female voiceover artist in New York, which has been great for her as well. So it's a it's a one to one connection. 
So I hook into her and her audio comes back to me. It's high quality audio and it's usable for production. And so I hook her into my DAW, hit record. Now, the, normally the client is in the room with me. So instead of doing a phone patch and, and as a studio, we're able to charge a little bit for this. Instead of doing a phone patch, the client can sit with me and we can hear it full res on the speakers and she can say, hey, can you take that audio? Can you edit that? Is, is take C with take A better right here? And you don't have to wait. I, everybody's like, well, why can't you just email the files? Yeah, but we're doing it right then because yep. you've, you've got an expensive national voiceover talent. You don't have a ton of time with them. And you need to make sure right there that you've got the right take. So that's yep. source connect. It's a one-on-one -on -one connection um, to either a voice house or a voiceover artist. But what's happened now is that our clients who are usually in the room. Of course, they need to be home. They need to be working from their office. They don't want to come in now. They can't come in. So now it's how do you bridge that through your DAW with Zoom or Skype, mostly Zoom. And so that's when we've been using Source Nexus to bridge between the voiceover artist, wherever they are, and the Zoom um, meeting. And it, it works. It works really well. It's been great. And they can talk to each other. We're the bridge in between. And we can do the editing right there um, for the spots to make sure that everything's good. Right. So Source Nexus is kind of a, an app that, that allows Source Connect to work with something like Zoom. What the big thing about Source Nexus is, unlike audio, well, audio movers listen to as a plugin, yeah. uh, but it's a plugin kind of coming in and going out, and you can do a little bit with it. But Source Nexus really can bust to everything. If you go with the pro yeah. version, it makes little audio drivers. So you could you could send to Zoom and send to Skype and send to Google now, send to you now. You can send everywhere, yeah. and it comes in the plugin in your DAW so that you can route different channels. I mean. The voiceover artist may not want to hear the music that I'm editing with, or the the client may, you know, you, you can you have more control over the, I guess the ear mix is kind of what you're sending all around by using right. Source Nexus as a plugin inside your DAW. Now, Source Connect isn't cheap. It is not cheap, although I think they figured out, oh, there's a pandemic, and you know, if we get off of our twelve hundred dollar tier and get some two hundred dollar, three hundred dollar tiers going, like my for my source connect, I had to rent it seven times or whatever for two hundred dollars <laughs> before yeah. I could oh I was like, I'm not can't spend fifteen hundred dollars on a plug in. But they right. now have a you know lower tier and you can rent and you can get in for a couple hundred bucks that doesn't do the highest, highest res and some things like that. So I think they figured that out. Right, right. Um, but yeah, that was sort of a that was sort of the common and still is the sort of the common professional remote production choice of commercial studios. Right. Um, so it's it's sort of like what people were doing before the pandemic if you weren't there in the room. And right. It works. But but again, for those of us, part of what's cool about this is a lot of the people that tend to watch our stream are you know, they've got a home studio or they, they're a producer or they're an artist and they're, they're doing a certain portion of this from their, their own space or they're collaborating with other people. So the more things they can learn about how you guys are trying to do this, um, the more they can either um, do it themselves or also be able to collaborate with a more professional studio like yours more effectively. If they can do the first 85% of the process and then ha just have you guys do I don't know, let's say the, the, the mixing or the mastering or even just the, um, the pitching and the publishing piece or whatever it is that is sort of your sweet spot in that process, um, then uh, hopefully everybody wins. Um, part yeah, of the yeah. spirit of doing this is that, you know, I, I have a fear that the ecosystem of the music industry doesn't even know what's happened yet. They, we haven't even seen the worst of it. I and agree. so what I'm hoping is that the faster we all learn how to work together in this um, kind of limbo before the shock is over and the real sort of, there's gonna be a drop. There's gonna be a drop in the industry. There's gonna be a drop in production. There's gonna be a drop. So the more people know about how to generate value in this new environment and collaborate with people that they didn't have to know six months ago, the better off everybody's gonna be. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I appreciate, There's, I think there's a spirit of sharing now um, more so than before because everybody's like well man like how, how else are we going to get through this oh yeah um you know uh i'm i one of my other jobs i, I won't go too deep into this but one of my other jobs is a worship leader to church right and as awesome. you know they're all shut down right but my church was live streaming already 
and so at full band, it really looked good. It's a Methodist church, just kind of low, harmless. <laughs> it was kind of a an easy going, pretty easy going church. Well, right when this yeah. shut down, all of a sudden you have all of these churches, and it's just like studios. You have all these churches that have nothing. They have no life, so they have nothing. They have a pastor holding up a phone. I mean, these are the, this is their yeah. livelihoods, right? I hate to say the church like that, but from a business perspective, these guys were sinking. And so we immediately started reaching out to people and say, hey, if you need to come record on our stage, come do it. If you need help with live streaming, come do it. We'll help you do it. And people, I mean, right. in tears would write these emails like, how do you do this? What, I, I have Facebook and a phone. What do I do? And we started right. to try to reach out and say, let, you know, let us try to help you with it. I mean, I think it's important musicians in any, in any of these areas, as much as we can reach out, we have to. And I've learned yeah. a ton from doing it as well. I really have. Yeah, that's that's actually true. I remember uh, my mom was telling me, like, you know, um, you know, the streams that she was watching. My mom doesn't watch live streams, you know, but like she was she was on there every Sunday, and like, and it was, you know, maybe just one pastor and uh, outside, and yeah, and it's like everybody was adapting all at the same time and kind of figuring stuff out. Um, and I've seen a lot of discussions around live streaming and, and worship. Um, that's an interesting one that we haven't really touched upon. Like what, what, what have you, what have you learned in that environment um, to try and make that situation um, work for them? This is going to be so counter to everything that you do and have talked about, but we immediately stopped live streaming. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Well, when right when it happened, we did our we did the next service with the empty room, and so we were a little panicked. And then something happened, and we put a tech, we used Wirecast, and we decided we should put a text to give banner across the stream at some point. Except it got stuck, and it was there for the entire service across the path. And it was live; we couldn't get rid of it. We couldn't get logged in. In. we couldn't yeah. make anything happen it was like that's it we're never Pre doing that again pre-record oh this thing God. and then stream it out because God, because it. for the church it's so it's it is the lifeline at the at the moment it's it's just yeah. it when there were 200 people watching you know when we had 5,000 people live and 200 people watching and those are the people that were on vacation that was a different purpose now this is the only purpose so we right. did go to a pre-record just so we can keep it cleaned up and we can go back and just in case something happens because it's so important. We're about to go back to live. And I, and I okay. think even then we've learned some more lessons pre-recording, like, okay, we can make this look better. We can make this feel better, make this sound better. And so, yeah, I mean, there's a whole live streaming culture. You know, I laughed that it was going to be live stream Armageddon on Easter this year because at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, more churches were going to live stream over the Internet than ever, ever had before. I kept waiting for everything to shut down, but, you know, it didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't, everything for was sure. fine. But, I mean, that moment, you know, 10 a.m. Easter Sunday 2020, I guarantee there were no – there's never been more live streaming than at that very moment that, <laughs> this year. Yeah. yeah, and everybody was figuring it out that day. Oh, it's rough. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's been so, helpful too, because we've mm -hmm. taken our church experience. Colton's a, a TD guy at a church. I, I'm at my church. So that's something we've been doing as well. We've been taking that experience and using it ourselves and, and, and learning from that and go, okay, now how can we that's use awesome. that and do it? And I, you know, I spent uh, many, many years as a, as a church musician, drummer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and one of the cool things is, you know, you're there every Sunday, you play every Sunday and you get better and better and better and better. And, whether it's the sound guy or the ensemble or playing to the, you know, sort of to the message or anything, you're there every week, like clockwork, Yeah. you know? So there's something about that that allows something like this, where you're trying to learn it and figure it out and get it settled. It's not a one time. I hope this works. It's we're going to be back next Sunday. Oh yeah. So, so I think that probably helps the process. Our DAW stream guy. Our DAW stream guy, he on Monday hates to see my name in an email or a text because I'm gonna go, "Hey, snare was too loud. The ride symbol, my, you're taking pictures of my gut. What are y'all doing?" And I get, yeah, "Oh right. my ah!" But we've worked really hard. It's starting to sound really, really great. <laughs> Thank you, Tori. Um, so you brought up an interesting point, and I think it's actually something that's worth talking a little bit more about. You know, it's easy to sort of um, put live streaming on a pedestal right now as like, oh, it's this new thing and everybody's got to figure it out. And that's the new blah, 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 blah. In a way, we've done that. But that's not really my intention. 
it's to explore it and sort of have it be something that people can utilize and, and use for what it's actually useful for. So my question is, whether it's music or a church service or something corporate or whatever, you know, there's a lot of value you can put into a pre-recorded stream, a lot. You can have people donate during that stream. You can have people interact in various ways independent of the media itself during that stream. So like, when do you think at this moment that you're kind of gravitating towards, guys, let's just go with a pre-record? And when do you think it actually makes sense to say it comes with some it comes with some challenges, it comes with some uncertainty, but I think in this case we should probably do a live stream. Wh where would you say the sort of the two categories are and what makes one better than the other depending on the circumstances? Colton, go. You answer that one. We haven't been live <laughs> He's like, I have yeah. no way, man. I'm not touching that. I'm, I'm a fan of pre-record just because I like things to go as planned. Sure. I mean, the interaction is great. You've got this thing on the side. You know, I'm looking at Annie Snyder right there. I'm like, can I say their names out loud? Is it okay? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm looking at Yuma Lens, and I mean, I see people commenting and thumbs up and everything. That interaction is priceless. You're not going to get yeah. that. Now you can pre-record and stream it out and be part of the chat for the pre-record, which and and that's fine too. I mean, I think, yeah. I mean, I think live stream as a as a term is going to be like Xerox was years ago, right? It's just a mm -hmm. thing that you do. You're either going to post a video on YouTube or you're going to live stream and have some kind of interaction, whether your content yeah. is actually live at that moment or not. But I guess that depends. But I mean, you're we're able to talk to these people right now. I think that's huge because they can ask a question, um, and. I think that's a, the best learning part. Colton and I are great uh, when we're well. We I was going to say that, but then I think how many times it how many takes it takes. <laughs> yeah. If it's a tutorial, I don't want to do it live because I have to stop because I keep messing up because I can't. St if it's a tutorial, people are lo you've looked at a tutorial because something's wrong in your life. Either you 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 can't figure something out right then. I mean, I can't. I mean, do you ever have two or three hours to yourself and think, I think I'm gonna learn how to do this? I mean, yeah, in a broad sense. But when somebody goes, I don't know what the command is to slice a uh, slice a track in Final Cut. I want to know what it is right now. They don't want to listen to us live stream. They want the answer right now. And you don't, yeah, you don't want to hear somebody sort of stumble through and oh well, let's try that again. You want yeah. to just watch it clean, perfect. Get to first it. Time. Get to yeah. it. So. Yeah. For me, the short tutorials, the pre-records are great. The live stream is just for us to interact. Uh, like when we did a we did a live stream of looking at Logic 10.5 for the first time. Yes, you did. And that was that fine. Was, so that was fun. I, I, I just want to say from my perspective, I think what made that fun was that you guys were sort of kids in a candy store. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's enjoyable to someone else who's like walking into the candy store for the first time because yeah. there, there's the information – Oh, I need to learn how to do this. Oh, that's interesting. They have, you know, live loops or whatever. But there's also someone else that's sort of the kindred spirit that's going, oh, this is cool. And oh, yeah, yeah, guys yeah, are, oh, exactly. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, no, no, wait, there's wait, wait. something fun about the imperfection of that. Now, Yuma says that we should make a blooper reel, but that would involve me definitely Ooh, getting a call. Yuma, from, that's a good idea. That would definitely involve me getting a call from one of the old ladies at the church because I would be just like, ah, rah, rah, rah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Be a lot of bleeps. There would be a lot of bleeps. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, I agree. I think, I think there's, um, there, there's something kind of valuable about having the, um, the back and forth. Yeah, cuss count. Yeah, dude, I'm doing really well, Tori. I don't think you've cussed one. I did it. I, I said I did. one. He I did, and I go, I did. Yeah. I'm glad I wasn't the first. And <laughs> normally, I don't give a about any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But you guys know. You guys that watch, it's like, what's wrong with Pete today? He's like, he's like, he's what's like, where, where's all the uh, s bombs and stuff, man? Um. So, so yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You said something else that was kind of interesting. That you know, live streaming as a thing, as a space, is something that um, you know, it allows you to teach people. It allows people to come in and try it. You haven't really been charging for that itself but it brings people into your world. And then those people may need something else that's not live streaming, but it's somehow connected. Um, have, you, have you found anything like that so far where someone came in because they're like, yeah, they're gonna just set up the cameras, whatever, that's fine. And then they're like, you know what? We can mix, mix our record there or something like that. Have you found 
live streaming to be some sort of a um, kind of a door opener if it's not actually something that you're monetizing outright. Some of the some of the more live to videos that we did, and again, I mean, they look live stream, but they were they were live, but we streamed them later. Hmm. We did pick up some we did pick up some work off of that. We absolutely yeah. did. Yeah. Um, and I and I think that's I think that's cool. Um, I think I think by building up a library of tutorials and things like that, we build a little bit of a trust. Um, yeah. You know, the weirdest thing about all of this is that people, I didn't, did you know you could comment on YouTube videos? I didn't know this. That feels like such a grandpa thing to say. I mean, uh, plus I have 10 grandkids, so I can say that. But <laughs> what my point is, Colton's like, shut up, Paul, shut up. <laughs> I, the, the, co the comment thing, I never thought, of, I mean, yeah, we get them. We like to go and bash people's videos on comments and everything. But then we got one. It's like, dude, I have a lot. I have a thing I have to do in three hours and I can't make this work. Is there any way you could zoom with me? So we did it. Wow. And we were frightened. I was so scared. I was like, this is going to be, are their pants going to be down? What's going to happen when they come <laughs> on the screen? What is going to happen? And you right. know what, Colton, were you on that call with us for the uh, South Africa call? Yeah, yeah, I was here. Yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden these two dudes come on. They're awesome. They're in South Africa and we helped them walk through it. We ended up talking to them for about an hour on the call. It was yeah. great. And since then, we've really been able to jump on and we, I just do quick Zoom sessions with people because they because their comments are like, I'm screwed. Can you help me? We're like, yeah, let's just right. do it, man. We got to help each other with this. We've wow. Got to. So you've actually had people hit you up from those videos in the comments and be like, yeah, ah, help. Absolutely. Here's my phone number. Here's my yeah. Skype number. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And I'm glad to do it. Yeah, no, it's interesting. A lot of people, um, I feel like their first video that they, bless you, um, that uh, that they put up for anything around live streaming was the the spike. It was, whoa, you know, in March right. or whenever it was that people did their first one and they went, holy cow, there's a lot of stuff that's that people are trying to learn. And then I kind of, I think it opened up a lot of doors for people like, like you guys to um, to sort of explore that, piece and, and basically like teach us as you're learning, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think it's been, I think it's been good for everybody. Um, what do you guys hope to see? I mean, obviously you mentioned the um, sort of being able to produce in real time from different parts of the world. What else about live streaming do you sort of hope to see, or are you excited about in the, I don't know, in the next maybe year? I would love to see more live performances. That's something yeah. that I've, that I've always thought would be a good idea just to like have a, a weekly show on Twitch or, or you know, YouTube live or whatever yep. and have, have bands, you know, play on the stream instead of going up, just treat it like a gig once a week. And you can, you know, I've tried to tell people that I produce for a while that they need to be doing that, especially if they don't have a big fan base, because it's going to, it's going to help, you know, grow them. It's going to help if they want to put other content on their channel, it'll help that it'll help them for their live shows. You know, if they, they can get fans that might drive in and they'll, you know, get more album sales, more ticket sales. And uh, I mean, I like to watch that kind of stuff. So, so literally just artists going on and streaming live now and just do it as a, as a kind of a, um, uh, you just want you just want to see more of that. Yeah. yeah. I hope I, it can, it's, it, there's been a lot of it lately. I, I hope it continues. And what, what we're able to add, I mean, you know, everybody can pull up their phone, prop, put on it, prop it up grab your acoustic guitar, sing whatever they want. You know, everybody can do that. That's awesome. I love that. What we can offer is, man, we can upgrade that audio. You know, it's just really, we just need to hook you into the system, do a left and right out, and it's going to sound really, really good. You know, and you can have, a, you can actually have a drummer uh, as part of your live stream instead of your drums taking over everything of the sound when you're just doing it from your phone. So are you saying that you could do that from someone that Tori was saying she loves uh, watching these? Um, we, we, we've had a, a really great time watching watching these different um, streams and seeing kind of like what makes each one different. But yeah. do, are you saying that like if, if I'm playing guitar here in Los Angeles, you could set up a stream where it somehow goes through your studio and then goes live? Or are you saying – that artists that are coming into your studio physically are doing that in the studio, in the studio. Okay, Although I can do, I can do what you just said. Um, 
It's some that's some that's some math. <laughs> break that break that down for me. What's what's well? The let's see. Okay, so if you said I want to, uh, if for some weird reason you said I want to set up a camera and I want to. What do you mean weird reason? <laughs> <laughs> well, you would want to just do it yourself. I although maybe... some judgment coming from Paul right now, man. <laughs> you know, if for some bizarre, crazy reason. I don't know how. I think so. No, I'm so like yeah, I would let's take say, let's say we want all right. To do that. So I would take I would, I would do what you're doing right now, right? We yep. could take your feed, but I would want you to pass me. Let's say we want to, and we will be limited by two tracks of audio right now, right? So maybe you send me a mic for your vocal, and you send me a guitar. Send I could bring that into my system. I could using like using listen to. We could you can set the delay right the latency delay and listen to to match it up with the video on the back end. I could stream it out from this side. I'm not saying it would be perfect. That would be tough. The hmm. easier thing would be to have five or six people in here, route them to the system. There would totally. be zero latency there. Pick up a couple camera streams and then and stream them out. What cameras do you guys have in house for those kind of like, you know, let's just let's just set up some cameras and do a live stream. What do you actually have at the studio that you we've use? got a we've got a um a Canon XA fifty five, I believe, a Lumix um something fifty something. Uh so both of those will shoot four K. Uh we have a Canon 70D that we used for a while, but only shoot uh, 1080p, and so which is fine. So we did some shoots where we just knocked everything down to 1080p. We got a large swath of GoPros that I've boxed up to sell on eBay, but we were using those for a while. And then why did you box them up to sell them? Because I don't like the picture of it. But we only oh. got those. We got the GoPro fives because they are the only things that Sling Studio, which we have, said was compatible. And that was a killer little setup. Uh, Sling Studio, um, there were a couple problems with it, but you could buy the um, wireless pack, put your GoPro on the wireless pack, and then have them all over the room. They stream in. You can bring in four or five sources at a time, switch it live, although the switching was probably a three or four second delay. So you almost had to leave the room because you're being inundated with this live music sound, but you're trying to control it either on a computer or an iPad, so you have to walk out of the room. But you can switch it live right there. You can throw graphics in, throw all kinds of stuff in. And that was a killer how did, setup. How did you synchronize those with your DAW? Because if it's wireless, just fed it in. Um, okay, and it was dead on. Dead. You used on. Loop? How did you get? So the audio from the camera, there was no audio from the camera. There was just the video signal from the camera. Right. It did pick it up. It would pick it up, but you just turn it off. You mute it, it. and then Sling get, has an audio input. So we would go out of our, we would mix all, you know, 20, 30 tracks, mix them all down to two, send them into Sling Studio on the audio input, and it locks everything together. And it's What's really Sling Studio. It's some Martian voodoo stuff, buddy. I'm telling you what. It is, I've never heard of Sling Studio. You need to look into this. It's really, it's like a really great idea that I wish they would update, but it's really uh, killer. Yeah. Um, it's this white looking contraption alien thing. And then no, it's like it, a physical device. Yeah, but here's the killer part. So you can have like four or five wireless GoPros, right? Because, because it comes with this box that you hook into them. Um, and then anybody with a phone can be a source. So if you if you call up the Sling Studio iOS or Android app and turn it on, you become a source. And I can see all the sources in the room. So you got a band comes in and they're you know and their their crew is hanging with them. Everybody lifts up their phone and I can pick up anybody's phone who's filming and bring it into the stream. What? It's really crazy. And the audio is in sync. Yeah, you need to check wow. it out. You check it out. And so it, it says, basically can pick up, it can be like, oh, we have five iPhones in the room, say, and yep. any of them instantly are connected on Wi-Fi, and those can be uh, video sources and, I guess, audio sources, too. I don't know. Yep. The downside I don't like about yeah, it is, is the iPad control. you got to get out of the room because of the delay. Okay. It's, it's, slows, it's slower in the room than outside the room? Well, if you're in the room hearing music, but you're but you're switching oh, right. three seconds behind. You gotta second, get away. Yeah, it's yeah. off. It, it throws you off. It's like uh, got it, got it, got it. Got That's it, right. Got it. How much is Sling Studio? Thousand bucks. And it's this physical device that you basically like set up. Um, it, it, does it have a screen? Like, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> Are you making this shit up? Can we go get it? You want to see it? I'll go get it. You want me to go get it? You want to see it? Yeah, I kind of. Okay, do. okay, okay. okay <laughs> <laughs> because but, i don't believe he's got something i think he's in his garage right now going honey give me yeah. give me something uh I, I need to put some saran wrap on something really fast just don't ask questions i need a sheet and i, 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 and a and I need some paper mache yeah <laughs> 
I was trying to I was trying to describe to my girlfriend yesterday what paper mache was, and she's like, "What the what the hell are you talking about?" And I'm like, "I don't know. It's some voodoo shit too. That shit's voodoo shit." There we go. Um, there it is. Dun, yeah, dude. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> oh my god! It's like 2001. It really is. So that's it. Yeah. Look. Um. So. This and, is he, the, and, he, and he asked for a drum roll. Yay! Oh my God, what is that thing? So this is the receiver, and Good you can God, go. It's full <clears> of stars. <throat> it's got a, a bunch of inputs here, some inputs here. You put your SD card right in there, and then you hook up the wireless boxes that go to any kind of camera. Any camera can go into it. Well, there's a compatible list of cameras. Sure, sure, okay. And most of that, I believe, is about clean HDMI out. So. If your camera has HD, clean HDMI out, then it can be used as a source. Which then, GoPro doesn't. Correct? The fives, fives do. Oh, yeah. we have a little. All right, because Guillermo, uh, who was on about a month ago, was saying that part of the issue he had with the GoPros was that you couldn't get the HDMI clean. Yeah, um, they'll, they'll rate the HDMI four and five, and then after that, they don't rate it. them for compatibility. Oh, so the earlier ones... The earlier ones provide it, but the newer ones don't? I guess so, yeah. Ah. Let's see, like my, my Canon 70D, which I love, my Canon 70D does not have clean HDMI out. The new ones don't. Tori's like, yeah, dude, she's shaking her head right now. Nah, bro, nah. Yeah. Can't do that. But, but then your iPhone, iPad can also, any iOS device can be a source wirelessly as well. And then you just, you can have 10 sources lined up, and then you pick them in a grid. You can have four or five sources. You drag them in. You, you can cut, wipe, fade, all that stuff. And direct wow. your live stream. And then, okay, here's the killer part. When you're done, you get a switched program recording with audio that's synced, right? Then you get all individual camera recordings. Wow. So you get the sources. And it will do a crazy 4K conversion for you. Tori is secretly asking for some sort of a sweepstakes right now. She's like, what would we need to do to be able to give one of these away so that I can win it right now? <laughs> yeah. How do we make See? this happen? Like everybody on here is like, dude, I want one of those. It's this really killer. Stream was brought to you by Sling Studio. And there we, we acted like it was this complete, like, what the heck is Sling Studio? Right. Right. But it was all a big setup. Um, wow. So do you guys have <laughs> you guys are all nerding out on this more than us, which is fantastic. That's when we know we've won. I just 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 put my over here, just like this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gone. So I never even heard of that thing. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? People are absolutely in love with this this device. Do you guys have any um do you guys have any questions for these guys now that we've basically solved the riddle of the Sphinx on the stream? We found the Rosetta Stone. It's called Sling Studio. Um, <laughs> what other What other questions do you guys have? I have a selfish question. Yeah, um, do it. So, uh, is it possible? Is it possible that using an iPad, you know, on OBS or on uh, let's say on OBS, you can have a um, you know a, 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 um, a separate audio device from YouTube or some other stream. Is it possible to get that separate audio device in the same way using an iPad if you're streaming on an iPad versus a Mac or a PC? Okay. Know, I'm so glad you guys are going, fuck. Because I just asked Tori last week. Ding, 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 ding. Like, there it was. I don't, I don't think, I don't care anymore. I I went a, I went an hour. It's eleven oh two. I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you. It's eleven oh two, dude. I'm okay, not, so I'll tell you what I did do. Now, this, this may not answer the question, but I did, and I haven't done this live stream yet. But I did a test, and it was a sad test because I. I, I so I did take my iPad with eCam. Yeah. Okay. Went into the Mac with the okay. Thunderbolt cable. Picked yep. it up as an audio device, yep, and could screen share and pass the digital audio from the iPad into eCam without it having to be a mic. So it was picked up without a microphone or without an audio app. It picked it up as a digital device, as a digital audio device. Yep. So maybe the answer to your question is yes. I can. That's an app. I'm assuming I don't have eCam. It. eCam. eCam. Sorry. eCam. Have you used eCam? Nope. Oh, <gasps> really? Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Dun, dun, dun. 
so ecamm so you obs right ecamm is like um like the posh obs maybe first of all oh i see yeah, it's it, the non-free obs it's non-free but dude so yeah. when you yeah. click if you're sharing your screen right if i'm doing or a tutorial no listen ecamm's the thing man uh, when you stream with Ecamm and you click on a section of an app while you're streaming, it'll zoom in automatically to that section during the, while you're streaming right there. So wherever wow. you're working, it'll rework the screen. It'll come in and out. Plus, the, um, the background stuff it does is really nice. It's got some Gaussian kind of crazy background stuff that it does already, so it looks really nice. Ecamm is really nice. And he wants to know where, where, who are, who, where, are who sponsors? You mean their sponsor, dude? You guys should have some sponsors. Where are no your sponsors? No one sponsors us. Nobody knows who we are. We're Knoxville. Nobody knows who we are. We're nothing. We're just nothing. We're nobody. But you don't think it's possible to do it on an iPad without a separate Mac? To stream from your iPad. So basically, so like for example, I'll, let me let me describe what it is we're trying to do. Okay, I don't think me. it's possible. I get. I like this. With I like that, this game. With that, with that entree. So we do these music reviews where we kind of break down like, okay, here's a song. We're going to talk through music. We're going to yeah. talk through the production now. We're going to talk through the arrangement. Yep. And I'd like to be able to have a professional stream of that audio rather than like, oh, let me, let me just play it and you guys can hear it off of my, my phone right yeah, now. Yeah, we hate That's, that. We hate that. Fucking sucks. Yeah. So I want to be able to have just like <clears throat> on, uh, and again, it might be you now centric challenge i don't know if it would behave differently in a twitch environment or uh, other environments and certainly if you're using obs but within the ipad environment i don't know if it's possible to have a, a sort of separate you know online audio coming in so that when we're listening to llama's um you know stream on friday we're hearing it from the internets the interwebs and we're not hearing it from some device at my home. But that's when streaming from the iPad. Yeah, that I, I, I mean, there's some cool hookup stuff. Um, Colton, I smell a tutorial challenge right here. Yeah. Ooh, a tutorial challenge. I like yeah. that. Well, if we crack this, we have us back on. Yeah, dude. I'm well, into this. Well, do we want to crack it right here? We want to be like. Dude, they're going to be cracking the the uh, the iPad code. What do you call that inner audio app thing on iP iOS? What do you call that? I, I, I can't remember what it is. is it, what are you asking? And it may be. It, I love it may this. Be, I'm so confused right now. I'm so excited. It may be inner audio. It, asking me. It may be an IAC or uh, iOS. There's an IAC thing. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I can't remember. I don't use it very much, but I'm going to look into this. So there is a whole thing that buses audio inside of an iPad, and it may oh, be that you need to go. Blessing. Right. Okay, so you may need it, to go to that it. bus program and bus mm. it in. That would be the way to do it. The way I would mm. do it on a Mac, of course, yes. is use Loopback and take sure. your Chrome browser and plug it in from and, and set up an audio device that's got um, whatever you're using. And, and, you know, I can no longer speak. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I just that was so much out. fun. I was like walking into like, you know, have you ever studied Russian? No, let's just walk into a Russian class where they're teaching <laughs> yeah. Russian in Russian and just see if you understand anything. Just, I don't know, maybe, maybe you'll pick something up. Okay, we're taking the and challenge for that up. Glorious 60 seconds. I had no idea what you were talking about. And I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, so an iPad does have audio bussing apps in it, and so I think with GarageBand because I've seen them because there's different um, there's different apps like I know a lot of like the Korg drum machine apps and everything will talk to each other, so you can have sure. you can be there's in GarageBand. Yeah, yeah. There's okay. I'm working on that. And you said something IAC. Well, that? I don't know what it's called. That was may I may have made that up. Like, uh, yeah, I think you did, which was amazing because I understood be, it. I'm like, oh yeah, IAC. What is interesting, IAC? Interesting, interesting like, ask. No, man, I, something. I don't know up. what that is. Um, I knew what you meant. I knew what yeah. you meant. GarageBand's an interesting spin. I bet there's, I bet there's, there might be something there too. Anyway, can I'm you use uh, AirPlay? Is that what it is? What'd you say? Say that like, again. One more time. What What'd you say, Colt? About? Which one? AirPlay. AirPlay. iPad. Not AirPlay. No. Well, there is. Okay, so you know, it, it, there's an there's something called Audio Bus. There's something called Enter App on the iOS, and I, I've seen them both, and I know that 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 you can route apps with audio all around each other. I've never done be it before. It. That might be Colt, it. Colton, we are going to do a tutorial on this. So what we're going to do is play a YouTube video from a this. YouTube from a from a Safari browser and stream it into 
you now through is there is it an app or does it go through browser as well? For you now? Yep. It's, it can be either one. If it's an iOS device, it's an app. If okay. it's a Mac or PC, it's, a, it's a, through the browser. So the trick is to audio bus a browser from, uh, a, I, from an right. iPad or a phone to bust that audio into the YouNow app. You're even better at asking the question than I am. I can make <laughs> this happen, man. He was like, no, 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 no. It's going to take us five minutes to just ask this question. And we just got to the point where we asked it appropriately. You nailed it. Um, do you guys have any, um, questions for these guys? Cause that was sort of like my, my brain spin and Tori and I were like, I think you can probably not do that, but I wanted to hear what your guys, um, impression of that was, um, of was your fun. impression of Tori just now. No, or? I wanted to hear what you guys were. were Cause Tori doesn't like, sound like that. I mean, Tori's, I, I, like I, really, I know I enjoyed the conversation. I enjoyed talking, talking, talking to her. I know. Of course you did. <laughs> of course you do. I Very feel like funny. we should bring her on. Tori, you want to come on and nerd out with us right now? Come on, Tori. Um, oh, I got you now. Yeah. She's like, no, I'm, I'm in the middle of work. I got a call. I got this. I got lunch going. I just got to go by the window. By the window? What window? She like she has that favorite window. She likes to go oh, there yeah. when we're doing, you know, I'm the same way. I'm like, this is my window. It makes me feel comfy. Let's see, my window's right there behind me. Yeah, it's way in the back. There's no so are you guys here. in the same building right now or no? No, he's at his house. Okay. Are, can you guys open up the studio? Like now-ish? Are, are you open yeah. yet or no? Yeah, okay. I wasn't sure. Okay. We can be okay. open, yeah. Okay. We still we have we're in our we're in phase two. Um we have to be some we have to social distance a little bit. Right. Um, right. but it's not it's not as big as a big city. We don't we it, the impact has been less for us, definitely. Good. Um, Tori, you ready to? Oh, your hand is up. I didn't even see that, man. Let's go. I really like this you now. I'm really enjoying this. I want to find out more about this. Isn't it awesome? Because it's very. Um, there she is. What's up? Where else is coming? What's up, Tori? Tori. Tori, what's up? Hi. Oh my gosh, the stream was so fun. Did we didn't embarrass anybody? <laughs> no, I think everyone was excited and totally ready to have you. Fix, learn this tutorial and have you back on and explain to us how you did it. I'm ready. I'm, I'm working on it right now. I got my phone ready. I'm like, I've almost got the tutorial made. Hey, look at right. RHS Studios. Stop watching. I'm going to be like, on. let's see if they can do it in half an hour and have it live. <laughs> this would is be also awesome. most people we've had on the stream, too. It feels like a party. Awesome. <clears throat> That's good. Live stream party. <laughs> No, this has been a lot of fun. I really like this platform. I mean, this I think it, I could see a lot working with this. I'd like to be able to patch in our DAW audio. I tried it earlier, like 10 mm. minutes before we came on with you after the test. I tried to do a loopback route to do it, and, and then it started to all fall apart. I was like, Colton, we got to stop because we will, we will crush this. So if I, if, 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 I, it before. Yeah. If, my, um, if my memory serves me, I think Guillermo tried to do that as well. And I think if you're a guest, you can't. But I, I think if you're a host, you might be able to. Does that nice. sound right, Tori? Yeah. Or did I just invent that entire story? Yeah, you're kind of limited as a guest. Okay. It's okay. We can make stuff up about that. But we can I, flip I it. Like maybe the next time if you guys are doing the thing and we're on or however we do it, we could try it. Yeah. We could try it. I think you now is really cool because it's very um, – <clears throat> it's sort of really just focused on getting people connected. And it doesn't have a lot of extra bells and whistles that – um, can overcomplicate that process. And I think it gives people a chance to just meet and connect and communicate. The, the, the video platform is so easy. And it's, um, when I was doing my sort of grand research on like, okay, here's Twitch and this is what, uh, you, you know, YouTube does. And this is what, to me, you now is the most fascinating by far because it's just so like, you just dive right in and you're in. There's, there's no barrier to entry really. So what happens if I'm on right now and I say I want to go live from my phone? Will it knock me off? Yeah, it will. It doesn't like it when you're live twice from the same account. Right? Ah, I so got it. Right, right. That's, that's one of our favorite ways to break this. <laughs> if you want to know our favorite way to break it, it's, okay, I'm going to go on my phone right now. What? Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, okay, awesome, awesome. Yeah, it doesn't like that too much. It doesn't like it if you're trying to clone yourself on you now. Okay. I think it's a great idea. 
Um, do you guys have any, uh, any, any questions for us or anything we could help you with? Um, thank you very much for your, uh, um, just your mojo. I mean, we learned a lot, but I just, I, I think you guys are a lot of fun and, and I could tell from your videos that, you know, you're just, you're, you're, you're good guys and you love what you do. And I think that that is a big part of this is just, um, for people that are learning about the audio process, learning about studio stuff. Tori, like just learning about live streaming, I, I think loving the craft is at least as important as like having all the answers. Oh, yeah. Well, I think one, th you know, <clears throat> cue up the church organ for a minute. So one thing we're blessed with, <laughs> one, one thing the studio has been blessed with is that we have had a royalty stream of our publishing for quite some time. And it's really grown to the point where the studio can enjoy it itself. it does pay for it pays its own rent it might not put yep. food in our mouth but the studio it's royalty streams keeps pays its, its own rent, lights on keeps the internet keeps a fast blazing internet going and we can buy plugins and things like that but what yep. i'm what's nice about that is that we're able to not be panicked oh my gosh i don't have my 40 hours of 50 an hour recording sessions going on we're able to relax and I, and and to me it is very important that we've been able to take some time to help some people out you know, uh, I've been trying to get uh, we've made the offer a hundred times and nobody's taking me off of up on it because I think of just a, a fear. I keep saying to these poor bands, you know, the jazz bands here in town have to now be six feet apart from each other if they can even go back to the restaurant where their regular gig was, if they're even going to be open. So they've lost all their income. I mean, there's some tragic stories. I mean, it really I mean, it, I have teared up several times hearing from some of these people that they just they, they've lost their gigs. They've lost their livelihoods. They, they, and, and this is all they did. So we've been offering come to the studio live stream it let's let's upgrade your live stream and let's you don't you take the donations we don't want anything you know we're able to offer some of that right wow, now and, and I have a, I think I've got a couple of people who are gonna take us up on it because we, we have a may people that are moving to Knoxville right now after yeah, come on that. let's go come on and do it let's I mean, bring it you guys I'll totally do it I'll, I'll, you know because I mean and 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 the point for us would be just we, we want to help you out because we want to be a resource. I don't really want you to come and maybe do your whole album here, but maybe, I mean, but I, but I would songs. love to come and help you out. If you want to come yeah. cut some saxophones here and things like that, if you want to come and, and, and cut some, if you want to cut your album here, that's fine too. I mean, that'd be great. But, you know, we've no, been offering, we've been offering grad students to come in and do their auditions here so we can up, they can upgrade mm -hmm. their audition a little bit. We don't charge yeah. them for it. Um, some things like that. So we, we really are trying to be a resource studio. Which I think in the in the long run is something amazing. I would rather be. And that's just you guys stepping up. Like I think everybody has some small thing that they could do right now, um, and that's not a small thing. Like basically opening your doors and saying, "Hey, musicians that can't really afford to do this right now, like we're not we're not dying. Um, come on in and, and let's yeah. see what we can get done for you guys." Um, you're the only studio. And I speak to studios all day long. I speak, I speak to small studios. I speak to big studios. I speak to studios in LA, New York, and I speak to studios in small cities. You're the only studio I've spoken to that has mentioned that you're doing that. Well, I just, I feel driven to do it. I really do. We've got to, we have to. Thank you guys for doing that. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, that's the kind of mentality that it's like, I'm hoping that mentality spreads and continues and everybody's got their own small thing they can say well shit i mean normally i do this and i charge that for it but like maybe i can do this for the next little bit um yeah. that's the stuff that i think you know um helps this whole thing um i'm getting teary-eyed um no seriously that's that's amazing um and we'll definitely have a couple of people moving knoxville knoxville nice. probably the weekend well, the main driver of that awesome. is just um, when, it, when all the work does drive up and uh, dry up and I'm down at the uh, local market square busking, you know, trying to make a living. They go, that's that guy used to own that studio. He used to help yeah, me. Yeah, remember that poor guy? guy. Yeah, let's bring in everybody for free. There Give him a dollar. So sad. Yeah. <laughs> throw him a buck. No, I don't, I don't think that'll happen. Um, Tori, do you have any questions? No, I've just overloaded with info. I'm so excited. Wow. I don't yeah. think that's ever happened in the history of Tori. <laughs> Wow. She's I'm always like, yeah, so I had four questions. I'm not really sure which one to start with. My first question is actually, no. It kind Usually, of like, like after Guillermo's stream, stream where it's just like a lot of good info. I'm like taking notes. I have a bunch of other tabs pulled up. Like I want to look into that of just things you've mentioned. Nice. And yeah, it's all great. And I love that you guys have been like a resource on top of it. Um, yeah. It's for other people in the community. That's so cool. 
Yeah, and you didn't have to do that either. You didn't have to, you know, make those videos and put those out and do those live streams and do it a hundred times so it looks right. I mean, you know, props again. You guys are doing an amazing thing, and um, we appreciate you. And um, you know, I, I think I think what you're doing is is awesome. So if there's things that we can help you with, we do have a list for what it's worth on in our registries. Um, are you familiar with the A and R registry? You guys uh, get that, yeah, or have you yeah, seen yeah, it? yeah, yeah, floating yeah. around. We have a list of studios that, um, I mean, we published it initially a couple of months ago of like studios that were doing remote work or different kinds of sessions that they were allowed to at the time. Um, I want to make sure we can at least list you guys on there if you aren't already. I don't think you are because I don't no. know if we were connected. Um, and if there's anything that we can kind of put the word out on, mo most of your, if, if, if what I hear is correct, most of your revenue is really coming from, you know, um, sync tracks, production music, you know, cues, scoring, that kind of stuff, correct? Right, right. We do it a lot. And of most that. of that, is it fair to say that most of your clients are coming from Tennessee? Yes, yes. Okay. And are they coming from the Knoxville area? Mostly Knoxville, 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 sometimes around, and, you know, and, Knoxville, uh, Asheville, Nashville. North Carolina, Nashville, Asheville, North Carolina, um, just kind of all around. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, we're yeah, just down the road from Dollywood. So there's a lot of country artists around here. Have you been to Dollywood? I've never been. Well, My you need to get, you it. need to cancel your plans and go because Annie wants to know if your studio is taking donations during this time. <laughs> oh, I love that idea. Um, I, you know, no, we're not. I mean, if I had an artist, I should have a donations for artist list. That's what I really should do. Say, so, hey, just donate to this pot and let these artists have it. That's um, a good idea too. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Even the donation question was answered so sweetly. We'll take donations and give them back out. <laughs> now, of course, Mrs. now Mrs. Jones would then hit me at the back of the head with a board and remind me that I have a daughter going to Berkeley College of Music in two months, and she would say, <laughs> hell, "Hell yeah, we're taking a donation." <laughs> yes, it's called hashtag Berkeley, right? <laughs> yeah. Does she know what she's studying there yet? Uh, she's a saxophonist and she wants to go into commercial music. So, uh, awesome. you know, they've been really great. They zoomed with us. She got to meet the kind of the department head. Um, yeah. They've been very upfront about what's going on, but apparently they're going forward. They'll do about uh, 40 cent in class and then probably yeah. go till Thanksgiving and come home. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm sure she's excited. That's an amazing school and. Uh, yeah, she's, she's very, do, she's I'm very sure pumped. She's very Keep well. those royalties coming in. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Please. Yeah, that's not a cheap school. It is not. Um, cheap. But, but, uh, but I mean, a solid roster. Um, Tano, who was on, um, if you guys get a chance to see some of our earlier streams on the YouTube channel, Tano is twenty three. I want to say, like, just graduated a year ago. And he's crushing it. He, oh wow! Well, yeah, graduated with a, a dual major from Berkeley, production and performance. And I mean, just clearly knows. Knows his shit. Yeah, I'm excited for her. Yeah. I have her and then I have a baseballer coming up. Nice. Yeah. Well, of course, we're not playing baseball right now, right? So it's like, brother, you need to pick that saxophone back up because <laughs> I don't know, brother. You're going to have to start working on it. The saxophone saves all. That's right. That's right. Um, well, thank you guys again for everything. We appreciate what you're doing and thank you for the, uh, the knowledge and the inspiration. Um, you know, you have our contact info. So if there's anything we can help you with on on the publishing uh, on the on the publication side or the A&R registry or contacts or anything like that, um, I'll reach out so you have my direct um, contact info as well. That sounds great. Um, and give you guys some samples of our publications. I think the film and TV music guide could be particularly useful if you haven't um, been seeing that um, around. Again, um, anything we can help you with, um, please let us know. I sure Thank will. You, <clears throat> the next link from us will be a iOS browser into yes. you now tutorial. Yes, I love it. Special I request. love it. <laughs> Beautiful. So thank you guys again. Have a wonderful you. week. And uh, we'll definitely keep you posted on stuff we're up to. And uh, we're looking forward to the tutorial. Wink, wink. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank coming. you, Annie. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Annie usually has uh, sort of some questions around marketing sometimes and sort of big picture stuff. Um, she came to us through a really wonderful um, uh, loop guitar loop artist named Matt Walden. Who nice. You guys would I absolutely enjoy. Um, I don't know, Annie, I don't know if you have any questions for these guys, but if not, um, 
thank you again for everything. Thank you, Tori, for making this possible. Okay. And uh, we'll see you guys on Friday. Now, is this, Tori, is this where we talk about the art of the sign-off that we discussed earlier? Yeah. You know, in this new 2020, the sign-off is really important in these Zoom meetings and live streams because the sign off. if you fail, it's just you've ruined the whole thing, right? Right. Just an awkward pause. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's time to end the stream right now. <laughs> Like back again. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate everything. Thanks, Paul. Peace. Thanks, Paul. Peace. Thank you, Paul. Oh, Peace. You had it.